very emotional night for me, and uh, as you can see, I was a little tentative. You know, I wanted to make sure that I secured the victory, and everyone says, you know, the decisionator, Ryan LaFlair, and I know, you know, I can't finish fights. Trust me, I wanted to finish the fight, and uh, I let, you know, I let my emotions get hold of me. As you can see, after the fight, I almost broke down a little bit, but uh, just happy that I got the win. I was a little disappointed in the stupid mistake I went for that crazy takedown, but at the end of the day, a win's a win, and uh, I want to fight again and keep it going. Vellante said that, you know, just fighting, you know, so close to home like this, there, there are nerves that are associated with that. Did you feel those at night? Oh, 100 percent. I never get nervous. I guess, uh, you know, my ADD normally plays in a positive effect when I fight because I just, don't, you know, tune out everything else and I just fight. But today I was just, you know, my father was at the fight for the first time. He's never been to one of my fights. I've been fighting since 2008. And uh, he's never been to my fights. So as soon as I walk out, as the first person I see. I'm like, well, I can't get knocked out in front of my dad. And uh, I was, I, you know, obviously I felt good, but I felt like my range and, and, uh, and my timing was a little bit off just because I wanted to make sure that I, uh, you know, didn't lose. <laughs> it looked like you came pretty close to getting. Ah, yeah. man, a couple of those times I was kicking him and I wanted to hit, I wanted to land. I felt, I felt his skin like this much. I'm like, if I was two inches closer, he'd be sleeping. But, you know. Oh, after the first round, I was like, oh, all right, the warm-up's over, let's go. So the second round, I thought it was my best round. Third round, I felt fine, but I kicked him in like the hip or the elbow. So my left foot was, was hurting me a little bit. Um, I, didn't, wasn't, I wasn't feeling it, but I just knew that like, all right, I, you know, I can't throw that kick again because I'm, you know, I might shatter it and I might not be able to walk. So um, the second round, I felt the best. I still felt good going to the third. I, then I, I, don't know, I made a stupid mistake with that takedown and now beat myself up about it. Did you talk to you? Or did you talk to your dad after the fight? I haven't talked to him yet. I just kind of went straight to the doctor. They got stitched up and then did some interviews. What, what, took what some kind pictures. of feedback does he normally give you after a fight? My dad's the most If you met him, you would think that he's a you know, confident and secure guy, but he's, uh, he's like the most nervous guy ever. You, get, you, know, you, you think he's like a 15-year-old girl uh, when it comes to me fighting. So I'm curious to see what he was like. Did, was, uh, to what extent did it excite you that he was there? See it. Like, I want to impress them. Yeah, I want to impress them. I, I, like I said, as soon as I walked out, I'm like, I'm always ready. I'm game face on. Like, let's go. And I, the first person I see is standing up, like, tense. I'm like, oh man, my dad's nervous. I can't freaking. I'm thinking about it. But at the end of the day, a fight's a fight. And you know, if, you, if you're not worried about the opponent in front of you, then you got more problems than that. You know, you gotta still gotta fight. And guys, guys want to kick your butt. Did, did you have to talk him into coming to this one? No, he was like, this is it. It's in New York. You know, I finally, finally fight in New York because he knows how much I've, uh, I've lobbied and I, how dedicated I was to making it legal here in New York. Even before I was in the UFC, I was going on Hot 97 radio shows. I was doing everything you could do to, to get it legalized in New York. And, uh, and now it's here. And I mean, my dad knows you know, that I dedicated my life to this. He knows that's how I support my family. And he was like, I got to be there. It wasn't even a, a thought. So it was never that he didn't support you being a fighter. No, always supported that. me. Yeah. You know, I've been an athlete my whole life. He's been in every wrestling match, every lacrosse game. He's always supported me. He just, you know, no one wants to see their their kid get punched in the face, but he's accepted that it's a real sport, and uh, and you know he believes in me, and that you know helps me believe in myself too. Are you looking to get on that Buffalo card? I am. I'm looking. I, I think I'm good to go. I got a couple, you know, bruises, nothing crazy. I want to be able to. I want to stay active. One of my biggest problems. I think I'm. I'm the best in the world. One of my biggest problems, I can't stay ha uh, healthy. I'm, you know, I fight one time a year because my hands injured, my knees injured. I think if I'm healthy and my and I'm active, no one's beating me. I mean, you can say whatever you want, people. You know, I only decision guys. But wait until you see the best Ryan LaFlair because it's gonna, you know, it's gonna shock a lot of people. It was extremely difficult, you know, because like, that was that. But what are you gonna do? I can't beat myself about. Uh, about it, you know, I was hurt. I had the hand surgery. My doctor said there's no way. I just barely made this fight. Like, my hand was hurting up until like last week, and now I finally, you know, it felt fine. So, you know, it was what it was. I got to watch it, and you know, I was just happy that I was able to get on this card. Have you just come to terms with the fact that you're always going to be battling injuries? Yeah, that I have. At some point, you will weather the storm, or is this just going to play you your entire fighting career? Yeah, that's a great question, Ariel. I hope that I that I that's past me now. I hope I'm, I'm a lot smarter now. If you ask any of my training partners, my coaches, I was always the guy who went 100%. My training camps were it was like a, a battle fight, and now I understand. I know how to fight. I don't need to go out there and spar twice a week. Every, you know, I know what I need to do now. I know 
how to preserve my body. I'm a veteran. I can honestly call myself a veteran now. So I know what you have to do to, to not get hurt. And if I get hurt in the fight, it's something that happens. But I think a lot of my injuries came from training. And now I know I calm myself down a little bit in training. Like I said, I know how to fight now. So I think from here, it's, uh, it's downhill from here. And hopefully, you know, getting that top 10, top 5, and then I'll get that, make that title run. Yeah. Well, I, I, I did most of my camp here in New York. I have, I'm very fortunate that I have two great striking coaches, uh, Keith Trimble and Henry Hoof, who uh, they, they talk to each other. They're both on the same page at all times. When I'm here, I focus a lot on boxing with Keith and, uh, and a lot of, you know, co te technical combos and stuff. And when Henry, it's basics, you know, elbows in, hands up, hard kicks. So they, I take a little bit from both of them, and I, I, they both have been in my corner since day one. And honestly, I, I got the best of both worlds with them, too. No, I, I, yeah, I, I've always been around. You know, I'm, I'm always back and forth. I don't, you know, I, I wasn't involved with any of this, the, the parting ways. Me and Henry, since his first time coming to uh, to America, I actually, that's when I first signed with uh, with Glenn. We both got there at the exact same time, so I've been with Henry since he's been there, and so I just ha always had, a, you know, a connection with him. So I kind of just went wherever he went, but I had, you know, I wasn't picking sides or anything. Ariel, 100%, like you said, it was, you know, the fact that I wasn't on that MSG card was something that it was like, no. But you know what, it's all the same. I, I was just happy that I was able, I'm the first fight here in Brooklyn. I'm ha you know, at first people were like, oh, you're on the, the fight pass prelims. You went from the main event to the, to the, the fight pass prelims. I was actually happy that I kind of made history here, the first fight in Brooklyn ever. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, honestly, I could kind of check something off the, over the bucket list. That's the most important. I'm happy you asked that. It's the most important thing to me. I feel like I'm a, you know, I'm an instructor. I own Long Island MMA in Farmingdale. I have, you know, hundreds of students who all look up to me, and I, I would like to feel I'm a, like I'm a good role model. I, uh, you know, I'm a college graduate. I have a family, so I'm like I'm the type of person that I that shows that MMA isn't just like a bully, brutal sport. And I was happy that all my students were able to come here and and watch me perform. And, and, and I like, you know, sportsmanship is very important to me. I don't like to get in my opponent's face because at the end of the day, they got to go home to their family and I stay here with my, with my family. And uh, I was very happy to be able to you know, do that in front of my friends and family and, and students.